Hey guys, how's it going? So I took this week off the drum set. I've got some fresh healing tattoos. I'm gonna give some time before I start sweating again. But this week I'm doing a couple other different types of videos. I got a really cool tutorial video that I'm gonna be dropping later in the week. And then this video as well. I posted that I was gonna make this Q&A on my social media and asked you guys to hit me up with a bunch of questions. And I got a crazy response to questions. So I picked the ones that sort of came up a lot, the common ones, um, and a couple of the ones that I really just wanted to answer that I thought were cool. Yeah, I'm gonna answer them here in this video. So let's dive right into these questions. First question, is how long have I been playing drums for? I'm not like I get this question asked me all the time and I don't ever really know what to say because like I guess there's a few like stages or something I don't know like at one point when I was 14 13 I decided to take it really seriously so in a lot of ways maybe like when I was 14 15 that's when I really truly like started to play and actually like you know was practicing daily um, putting long hours in really investing myself in it but there's pictures as young as five years old of me with drumsticks in my hand just because like we had this little like kid play set for a while from the ages of like five to nine I think I just played around with that once in a while and during those ages too like I had play messed around with like a little piano I had done some guitar lessons kind of thing but uh but yeah I don't know and then after that like my very first actual like full-size like adult kit I think I got when I was like 10 years old so I guess you could say since I was 15 I'm 23 now so I guess you could say since I was 15 seriously but I I've had drums in my life in one way or another for a bit longer than that, so. So the next question is, what is my favorite band? This one's super easy. Number one favorite band all time, Ask Alexandria. My very first tattoo when I got when I was 18, it was the lyrics from the beginning line of a prophecy, how stubborn are those scars when they won't fade away, or just a gentle reminder that in our better days, I have that on my rib cage. I don't know, I've just always been obsessed with that band. And then there's two other bands for sure that are like neck and neck. Asking is definitely number one, but I have a place in my heart for architects, for sure. And then I'll, nobody would ever guess this but up there as my top favorite bands um, disturbed by far so those are my three so ask alexandria architects and disturbed would be my three favorites what's my dream drum endorsement is the next one if we're talking like just shells i guess like shells and hardware because that's kind of like the drums um then my dream endorsement i'm not endorsed by any drum or shell companies at the moment so my dream endorsement would be either by dw or mapex when I was a kid, I would have said DW right away. Um, in the last couple of years, I don't know, I've sat down at a couple of Mapex kits and I'm really impressed with how those are built. So one of those two. I just have to say just because of the legacy behind DW, probably DW drums. Next question is how many bands have I played in? Um, how many bands? So a lot. <laughs> I've played for a bunch of people. Like I've done like, I've, I've sort of gone out on the road with um, with like these girls that are trying to be like a pop star, pop artist or whatever. And I've played in a backing band for um, a couple acts like that. Um, one was a country girl. The other one was sort of more traditional pop. I think she's doing a bit more country now these days, but th th there was two of those. And then I played as a fill-in drummer in a whole plethora of bands. I did punk rock. Uh, there's two punk rock bands I can think of. There was a, a few metalcore bands for sure. My earliest band, like the very first band that I went on the road with and was taking seriously, uh, was a pop rock band. And then I would played in, uh, then I played in some metal bands after that. So I don't know the actual number, but if we're just talking about bands that like I took super seriously and I was a recording member and I had, uh, I had the sort of a leadership role in, then, then I would say four. But even one of those, like I was playing in like a couple other bands at the time because drummers get around. That's how it is. There's not a lot of drummers and I don't know. There's always just, that's always the one role. It's just like, it seems like it's always drummers and singers. Like those are the guys that. Never have an issue finding a new band, so. So the next question is, what made you want to play music? I'm going to I'm gonna kind of rephrase that question, just like what made me want to like sort of pursue this as a career. I guess around the time I was 14, 15 again, I was, uh, what, grade 10 at that time. So here in Canada, that would be like me taking like the civics class. And I don't know what it is about our school system and the way that grade is set up or the curriculum for it, but part of the course is called careers and you get to learn like how to make a resume and in part of making a resume they kind of like are really pushing you into you have to figure out what's next you have to figure out like the second you get out of here you're gonna hit college and you got to know what college you're going to and then you've got to know what you're gonna do for the next like 50 years until you retire that kind of mindset or whatever and it was so like so over pronounced um, when I was in that class at that in that grade that year and that was the year that I was like all right well there's a couple things I'm doing in my life like at the time I really enjoyed uh, I was playing football um, I really like football 
And then outside of like just like some sports and like lifting and whatever, I was also just like, you know, doing like a skateboarding and mountain biking and whatever. But I, I was like, I really wanted to be a professional football player up until that point. And then when I hit that career class, I just like something clicked in me. I was like this, this whole drumming thing, like I don't want to be part of anything that they're telling me I need to be a part of. And I'm just going to go and spend as much time in my basement as I have to until I'm good enough to get picked up and maybe start making some money down the line. So what made me, I guess, just like. I've always loved music. Beginning of high school, I definitely went through like some tougher times with like going through phases of depression and stuff like that. Not really, you know, dealing with issues of fitting in and whatever. And that that even drove me more into like the metal scene and the kind of music that I play now and the kind of music that I worship and listen to on daily. And I guess like I just found sanctuary in that. And then the idea of just sinking into that and allowing that to become everything that I am and everything that I do. It just uh, it brought a lot of peace into my life. So that's what kind of drove me down this path. It was sort of pressure to figure out what I wanted to do from outside. And then the more that hit me, the more I just went to this one happy place and I just sat in it and thought like, okay, well, this is where I'm gonna establish like a base and, you know, branch out from here and whatever, so. So yeah, that's what kind of drove me into music. Okay, so the next question is, who is your favorite drummer in the metalcore scene? I don't know, that's a really hard question to answer. I have quite a few favorite drummers. If I were to like absolutely forced to narrow it down to one person, I'd probably say James Cassells just because he is the drummer from Asking Alexandria and I, to this day, worship that band. But there's a lot of guys up there as well in the metalcore scene that I absolutely love. Luke Holland has been a huge influence. Um, watching his videos taught me how to play drums. So Luke Holland's definitely up there. He'd probably honestly he's probably a better answer so maybe james cassells luke holland the only reason i'd say luke is a better answer is just because like as far as like influencing my playing directly because of his covers that really helped james cassells footwork blows my mind though so um his ability he's got the access longboards and uh and his ability to play like crazy crazy fast 16s with the heel toe technique the the um the double stroke on those pedals is is mind-blowing so the next question is what is the band or album that has improved your drumming the most i'd have to probably say real by the word alive i'm not the biggest word alive fan i think they're cool like i have uh, i have all their records on my spotify since luke joined the band i've been listening to the band but i wasn't like ever super stoked until luke dropped that record real and then he posted all of the uh the playthrough videos those playthrough videos helped me so so much i watched those and i practiced those videos every single day i did recovers for i think four of the songs off that album all of them were the ones that he dropped the playthroughs for and it kind of helped me kick off my youtube channel the first of the covers that i filmed on my own in my basement the very first one was one of those songs and it kind of took me down the whole like you know i'm gonna pursue this whole cover thing and start posting youtube videos so that record for sure real by uh, the word alive so the uh the next question is self-taught or schooling i guess like i guess like by schooling if you mean like lessons i had a couple lessons uh in drums specifically i only had a couple in the early days i was taught at the time i was taught like a paradiddle i think i learned like a double paradiddle and the differences and like i had like um we had talked about like a double stroke roll Maybe maybe we brushed on triplets, but uh, but it was only like a couple months long. Uh, most most of it was self-taught. Most of it was self-taught over YouTube. But watching other drummers, watching Kobus, watching Luke, that's part of the reason, honestly, why I do the lesson videos. Because when I watched those covers back in the day, when I watched those covers and I did like I would cover those songs that these other artists had already made playthroughs for, or in Luke's case, he had done like a Paramore cover, and then I learned the Paramore song by watching him. So I recognized back then that like this is this is my best way to get better and learn songs and have stuff to post as YouTube covers. So now what I try and do with these lesson videos is send Essentially, like if there was a format at the time when I was younger and just starting out that was set up that would be the ideal way for me to learn a track, it, uh, I sort of envisioned that into these lesson videos. So no, I'm mostly self-taught, self-taught for the most part. I, I would probably say all self-taught because I'm going to take most of the credit because I learned so so little. And I wasn't, the other thing too was when I was doing lessons, like I didn't really care yet. I hadn't hit that like 14 year old phase where I was like, all right, let's do it. Let's get going. Let's make this happen. So I guess mostly self-taught and then um, off YouTube really. All right, so the next question is, what do you think of your TD25KV? My TD25, I purchased in August. So just a couple months into practicing with it. I practice uh, five days a week on that guy. And as you know from some of my other videos, that's where I learn uh, all the covers that I do. I love the kit. Absolutely love the TD25. It's my third electric kit at this point. Uh, my first one was a Roland. I don't remember which one. I was a lot younger and my parents bought it because they were so sick of me making far too much noise. It, had, it didn't have mesh pads either. The whole thing was rubber. So it was definitely going bad. 
back. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, it might not even have been Roland. It might have been Yamaha or something like that. But that was my first one. And then my second one, the one that was like, that I did most of the practicing on, I learned all of my early covers on, on it, was the, uh, the TD20, no, the TD15, K TD 15 K. Yeah. So it was, it was the TD 15 with, I think the TD 20 brain. I could be wrong on that, but I think that's what it was. Uh, I love that kid to death and I played it to death. And then the TD 25 K has been a similar experience, but everything is just better. So everything the last kid had, this kid has, but it's just taken to a whole other level. Um, it feels completely like I'm playing a real kid. I absolutely love the thing to death. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the next question is, which drumsticks am I using? I'm holding them right here. I use, only ever use the, uh, here, let me see if I can get this. I don't know if you could make out what that was saying, but that's the, uh, they're the Thomas Lang Signature Series by Vic Firth. These sticks are beast. They're big and chunky and they have so much power behind them. The best part is they're balanced like no other stick I've ever held. I absolutely love these sticks. So yeah, Thomas Lang Signature Series by Vic Firth. So the next question is, why are you so quick to cover songs that have not been released very long? Uh, yeah, that's a good, really good question. I even said in my overview where I run you guys through how I make my covers, I even said in there that one of the things, one of the four things I look for is I try and cover new songs. The reason why is because I've had one cover that blew up and got my channel a lot of attention um, early on. I think it got like it helped me get like 2,000 or so. It helped me get to the 3,000 subscriber mark. That was my cover of I Won't Give In by Asking Alexandria. I did that song and I think I was the first one to put it up. And not to mention, I mean, like that was the first song that Dennis Stoff was a part of when that um, when Danny had left the band. So there was already a ton of hype around that song. And then I managed to be in the first one or two covers that was posted. Uh, and that got me like, I think the video is now is at 90,000 or so. It's about to break 100,000 views. So that helped me so much early on. And I just feel like, I try and replicate that as much as I can. I don't ever want to like a song comes out and just do it for the sake of getting more subs because I do really believe in just doing the songs that I absolutely love. But it is Ask Alexandria. So if Architects drops a new song, you know, them are one of my favorite bands. Yeah, I'm going to try and get it up as quick as possible. So I'm the first one on YouTube and I get more subs and that kind of thing. So that's really, it's just like more of a strategy involved with doing that. But like I said in that video, and like I'm saying again, I don't cover songs unless I absolutely love them. And if that means that there's not a new song coming out that I don't love right now, then I'm not going to do anything. And I'm going to go back to something that has influenced me when I was younger and sort of do that, which I've done time and time again. I just did that recently with the, uh, with the data remember cover. So the next question is, uh, can you show us the gear you are using? Yes, absolutely can. I'm going to do a deep dive where I break down all the pieces. I'm going to do that as its own separate video. So that will uh, that will be in the in the coming weeks. I'll have something like that. Next question is, how many tattoos do you have? I got a few. Uh, <laughs> I have. So my arm here. I'll like move for this. So I've got most of my left arm done at this point. I guess you could say like. If you count the sessions for this arm, like, I guess there's been five so far. So you could call that like five tattoos, but it's really just one big thing. I guess five there. I have one on the back of my neck uh, and then I have three on my torso. I've got one on each rib cage on either side and then I've got one, uh, one on my back. I'm gonna do like a tattoo tour kind of video as soon as I finish up this sleeve. Um, I'm gonna sort of just talk about my artist and the location I go and all that kind of info. And uh, I just have one more session until it's finished up. So I think the last session is December 1st and then the following week after that, I'll do a, a video where I get some close up shots and, uh, and we can talk about that then. So the next question is, what is your favorite symbol and why? What's my favorite symbol and why? Let me think. So I think my favorite symbol is probably, I have my left crash. It's always furthest to the left on my kit. Uh, whether or not I have two crash symbols on the left or just one, it's always the left-handed crash. Well, not always, almost always, almost always. And it's a 17 inch ALT crash by T-Rex. It's my favorite symbol. And the reason why it's my favorite symbol is because it is a juggernaut. It's the one symbol I own that I have not replaced. Every other symbol has been replaced at least three times at this point. I've been through five Chinas since I started playing TRX symbols. Um, I've been through four, four or five crash rides. The LTD crash rides, I've had 21 inch and 20 inch crash rides. I like the, I'm currently playing with the 20 inch. I like the 20 inch a lot. Um, I've had uh, two CLS. 20 inch crash symbols they call them crash rides but they're really just they're really just crashes to me i've had one no i've had two nrg 19 inch crashes i've had 
three sets of hats at this point. The first one was like a BRT bottom with, no, a BRT top with a DRK bottom, which was like the Of Mice and Men blend. It was kind of cool. So yeah, of all those symbols that I just mentioned, the one that I have yet to replace is the 17 inch uh, ALT. It's an absolute beast of a crash symbol. Well, it's a bit on the higher end, so I can't say you can say it's a beast, but it's definitely a juggernaut. It could take a lot of abuse. So next question is, do you play a lot of video games? And the answer is absolutely. <laughs> there's, I guess there's three things I do the most in life, and that's uh, I go to the gym a lot, I drum a lot, and I play a lot of video games. My number one play game was definitely World of Warcraft. I played World of Warcraft from launch for years, and I still to this day will log on from time to time. And then like I own a PS4, I have a quite an extensive Steam library. I will actually post, uh, you guys can add me up. I will post my, um, if any of you play any of the Blizzard games, I'm a big Blizzard fan, I'll post up my battle.net ID and I will post up my PS4, um, PSN. And then I'll add those in the description below. I'm probably gonna regret doing that, but feel free to add me. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is how many drum sets do you own slash have you owned? Uh, if we're counting electronic kits, then three electronic kits and four acoustic kits. So, yeah. Yeah, so three electronic kits and four acoustic kits. So I guess you could say seven total. At the moment, though, I only own one of each. I own my Crush Sublime E3, which is what I do all my covers on. I'm looking to upgrade that kit um, here next year, so I'm going to be... Uh, I don't know where to yet. I'm definitely going to be getting a bigger configuration. Uh, I want to go with, I probably want to go with two bass drums. Uh, I'm going to have one rack tom still, and then I want to add a second floor tom. So two basses, a snare, uh, one rack, and then two floors would be sweet. I don't know what company, I don't know what series. I haven't really thought about any of that, but at the moment I've had seven, and then I'm looking to upgrade my acoustics soon. So the next question is, how'd you get good at stick tricks? Um, like I said earlier in this video, I watched a ton of Luke Holland. I watched a lot of Adam Gray's stuff too. His live performance videos are really sick. And both those guys are super famous for their stick tricks. So watching those, I don't know, like it just right, rubbed off on me for sure. But then it wasn't until I met um, one of my best friends uh, when I was 16, I was playing in a band with him. And he was like, he was trying to convince me, yo, you gotta start doing tricks like Luke. You gotta, like the, the, the stick toss I do in specific, like this one, he wanted to see that. He wanted to see sort of that one that where like, I come down on like a China symbol or whatever. Um, he wanted to see that one specifically. So I practiced that one like crazy uh, because everyone else just does this, right? Everyone's got that flip, but he wanted that. And, uh, and sort of like as a challenge, I went home and I practiced it a whole bunch and I came back. I was like, yo, Matt, check this out. I can do this, uh, the flips now. And I was really bad at it at the time, but if you want to know the actual specifics on how I got good at them and how I continue to get better at them, you can check out my stick trick uh, lesson. Uh, I'm going to post up. I'll, that'll be in the description below. It's in the description of all of my newer videos. So you can check that out. I think it's like a 15 minute video or so. It'll run you through some exercises that uh, it'll break down how to get good at the stick tricks and how to keep them in your practice routine. So the next question is, can you cover bare tooth? Yes, I can cover Bear Tooth. Uh, my next cover that I started learning, no, my next cover that I will be starting to learn tomorrow morning is a Bear Tooth track. So October 31st, I will be posting a Bear Tooth song along with a lesson video breaking that down. I'm not gonna say which one just yet, although I have told a couple people, not that it's the biggest secret ever, but yeah. So yeah, your answer is yes, one, there's one incoming. Uh, so the next question is, what is your favorite drum cover so far? This is such a tough one. There's a few of the, uh, I think, like gravity I really love. I really love the way gravity turned out. The uh, the audio, the video, everything synced up really, really well. The angles are pretty cool. Um, there's definitely some cool stick tricks in it. I think probably Gravity by Architects, that, that cover turned out sweet. Oh, I did a Structures cover years ago. I think three or four years ago now. I really like that song. I don't even think that cover broke a thousand views. Maybe after this video, some of you will go check that out. But that cover was that cover was sweet. Structures is wild, and I had a blast playing that song. I found the song, despite how complicated it was, like I found it fairly quick to learn, and then making the cover was sweet and playing the song. I was playing the song even after I made the cover. That was the first time I've ever done that where I have a song and it's so much fun to play that after the cover, I'm still going back and using it as a warm up. I don't often do that. So that that was a, that, that's definitely um, up there as well. So Gravity and then that Structures track, I think it was a, uh, I think the song's called Paralyzed. No, I might be messing that up. I don't remember, but it, it was the only, the only Structures cover I have. Okay, sweet. So that pretty much wraps up the list of questions I have for this video. I am gonna do a second Q&A. So, in the comments of this video, ask away. 
and I will feature uh, as many of them as I can in the next Q&A video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got to know a little bit more about me. All right, so this is going to be one of two videos I dropped this week. Like I said, I'm just kind of recapping. I will not be posting a drum cover on Wednesday this week, but I will get you on next Wednesday. So October 31st will be the next cover, like I said. And then I'll be posting this video. And then there's a later video in the week that'll come, which is a tutorial that I really think you guys are going to enjoy. I don't want to say too much about it, but I put a lot of work into that video. So I'm really excited to see what you think. So as always, if you want to connect with me further, you can find links to my social media in the description below. I have been terrible at tweeting. Please follow me on Twitter. And I'm I'm going to pledge a little promise to you guys, a little vow to you guys. I will start tweeting more. I gotta get that going. I keep, I don't know what it is about Twitter. I log on to Facebook and Instagram constantly, but I always forget Twitter. But I'm gonna get up on Twitter and get some tweets going out. So help me with that. Get some retweets on those tweets. We'll post some of my covers. It'll be a blast. Stay tuned because I got that new video. I will see you guys soon with something new.